Lee, good to have you with us. Just run us through what the restrictions would actually be. Yeah, so this would be building on what already are extremely restrictive measures that many of these countries and companies have taken on their sort of own volition when it comes to um, China. But this would be basically using a new instrument, which is the foreign direct product rule, which is basically imposing that any foreign made products that use even a little bit of Chinese, of American technology within it would be legally banned from doing so, right? And this is aimed really at the service and repair of many of the chip building equipment that is already in China rather than new stuff coming in, which U.S. firms are already banned from doing, and there are already some restrictions there, but this would be a sort of patent sort of ban on them. And, you know, it's putting up pressure on Japan and the Netherlands, and it's basically from the United States perspective, what they would like to do is these countries to do it on their own without this pressure. So this really tells you that potentially they have not gotten the consensus that they wanted abroad, because this is using a bit of a heavy hand and could cause some diplomatic problems. Yeah, and some problems for the companies involved too. Tokyo Electron share is down 7.5% in Tokyo after uh, these reports. This is what the Biden administration wants, though. What about Donald Trump? Yeah, so listen, I mean, I think that from the Chinese perspective, we had a lot of reporting on this, and I've met with Chinese companies operating in Europe that sort of are thinking about this going forward. They really see basically no difference between Biden and Trump and don't really have a huge uh, preference about who uh, comes into the White House. They both see it as, you know, intensely negative for China. Trump, of course, have, uh, has vowed 60% tariffs across the board. What I think is interesting in the latest development is now the appointment of J.D. Vance as the potential VP pick. In one of his first interviews, he was asked about Ukraine, because obviously this is top, front, and center. But he wants to basically bring that to a close, he says, very rapidly, so America can focus on the real issue, which is China. So, you know, he's very well-schooled in technology. He comes from a VC background, understands the importance and sensitivity of tech, while at the same time wanting to be very sort of preserving of American industry. That combination is not good for China. Yeah, and Europe is stuck in the middle. What are they going to do? I mean, absolutely. They've wanted to play slightly more of a hedge role, a slightly more diplomatic role throughout this uh, in the beginning. I think that that has changed a little bit. I mean, I'm here in the UK because we're going to the EPC meeting where you have European leaders coming to discuss a number of issues. And I think China is going to be, um, you know, front and center for them. Um, you know, but, you know, could this FDPR, this bill that the, the Americans are, are proposing, be a little bit too heavy a hand? Could this stop cooperation? Would this move, uh, you know, the Europeans a little bit? They've also voted this week on the Chinese tariffs on electric cars, because remember, these were provisional tariffs. Now they voted on sort of getting the consensus um, formally through. From what we understand in our reporting, Germany abstained from that. So it shows you that there is actually not full consensus within Europe. All the German car makers from the beginning have said, hey, listen, we welcome competition. This is a good thing. We do not want trade restrictions. Um, and, you know, could that, you know, eventually sort of uh, break out a little bit more? Potentially. Where does all of that leave, though, these Chinese companies in Europe that, that you've been speaking to? Yeah, so listen, I think there is intense frustration for them. They wanted to do they want to do business in Europe. We know this from the car makers, but this extends also to technology companies. They've really felt the United States, even before the EV tariffs, is a no-go zone really since Trump, and they don't even really try to put their business there. Um, but they really see it, from their perspective, as this is strictly containment policy from the United States, and that Europe is just following the lead because they need the security uh, um, uh, guarantees from the U.S from NATO. Um, we remember just last week, Huawei was banned from Germany's core network. This is something the German government had been deliberating about for over a year. But really, this is viewed by the Chinese as just sort of delaying the inevitable. For many of the car makers, despite the tariffs, they're just going to build manufacturing production within Europe. That sidesteps the tariffs. And same thing for these technology companies. Um, and really, these Chinese companies will not give up on Europe unless they feel that they absolutely have to. Yeah, okay, so it's huge pressure.